Hello beautiful souls, it's Karen here at Soul Magic Inspirations and I was guided to do this past life reading today. So we're going to be doing a past life soul lessons. Okay, so we're going to look at your past lives and, and have a look at what they meant and see what lessons um, you were meant to learn or what you're learning. Okay, <clears throat> and I want to thank you all if you're returning. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. Thank you for watching my videos. I really appreciate that. If you're new here, welcome. I do have playlists. You can check that out. And please don't forget to subscribe, like, share, comment. I really love to hit see your comments, so please leave me a link below. Check out my other channel, Star Child Tarot, which is mainly picker piles and astrology readings, and also my card shop with over 90 designs and my Patreon page, which you can join for just $5 a month, and you get preview on a lot of the videos. And some are exclusive to Patreon. And if you want to support me, you can buy me a cup of coffee. So thank you so much. So pile one, we have the little uh, jewellery box. It's really pretty. Pile two. And these are no sign of what cards have come through, by the way. And pile two, we have like the Egyptian uh, king here. And pile three, we have the green, I think that's the venturine crystal tree. Okay, so just the symbols are nothing to do with what the cards are, just to let you know. So pick your pile and we'll get your messages. Hello, pile one, you chose the jewellery box. So I pre-shuffled the oracles and we are going to clarify these energies with the tarot as well. So let's look at your past lives. So we've got spirituality and religion. Karmic relationship, father, and this is my own deck, remember the time oracle, so outlaw, living outside the law and society, Syrian star seed, and Pleiadian star seed. So already it looks like some of you could resonate as being star seeds. You could have had lifetimes on other planets, other star systems, and very much got spirituality and religion here as a theme. Karmic relationships and father. So maybe difficult father relationships. Um yeah, so we're looking into that and an outlaw, living outside of the law and society. So you know, not wanting to be uh, restrained by laws and things like that. And as we're in the world right now, a lot of people are waking up to these things, that these laws are not necessarily for the benefit of the majority. They're, they're the benefit of the minority. So um, we're looking into that. So we're going to get some tarot messages. So let's have a look into the spirituality and religion. So all through our lifetimes, obviously, we're evolving and growing our soul. So what is that talking about? And this is my deck, Terror of the Witch. So we've got five of coins. So, yeah, you could have been ostracized in other lifetimes. You know, you could have been a witch. You could have been practicing medicine, you know, herbs. And the way she's dressed her as well, you know, you could be somebody that lived out in the woods like a hedge witch. You know, you did uh, move away from mainstream society, um, maybe through your own choice to preserve, you know, preserve your way of life in some way. And you were isolated and you, you know, people came to you as and when they wanted a herb, a potion, but you were very much on the outside of a society um you know not not living not living like the other people which is very much like this card here as well and we've got eight of cauldron so eight of love so i feel that eight of cups rather i feel that maybe in this lifetime we're picking up on you didn't really have a love connection you you walked away from love connections um 
I feel maybe you were very much focused on what you wanted to do. Um, I'm picking up the, the generation where women were very much, you know, had to abide by the men and that, and you didn't want that. You didn't want to be in a situation where the man felt he could control you or tell you what to do. You wanted to be free. That's why you went out away into the woods or whatever and you lived alone. And maybe you had an owl. There's an owl there. Maybe you had an owl or another pet um, for company. But I think you walked away from any loving connection and chose to be with yourself and be in that energy of self-love. And we've got the strength of the witch. So you were very strong in that lifetime. I feel you were very emotionally strong. It could be that you walked away from somebody that really did mean a lot to you, but you just had to focus on, on your own spirituality at that time. You wanted to focus on, you know, what brought you joy, how you could help others. And you felt being in some sort of committed relationship wouldn't enable you to do that. Yeah, the Nine of Coins is that independent energy. So I feel very much you were very independent in that lifetime. You know, you lived alone, possibly with a pet or two. And, you know, you were focusing on your your own spirituality. And we got the star energy there. So, yeah, I I feel you, you were a healer. You very much helped others heal. And you were a whole person. You were strong. You were sovereign. And you lived in your own power in that lifetime. Okay. So we've got karmic relationship. So what is that talking about there? Karmic relationship. got the world card so what's the world card in my mind? it could be that you were living in different parts of the world with somebody that you loved in different parts of the world maybe we've got the hierophant energy there so that's that committed energy but also that spiritual energy again so it could be that you were separated from somebody you love. Let's look a bit more in that. What's that kind of relationship about? We've got five of daggers. So that's that defeated energy. So I'm picking up that it could have been somebody that went off to war. That's what I'm picking up. Um, somebody went off to war and you were in different parts of the world. But you had this commitment, but you felt defeated over this lack of intimacy, a lack of a connection. And we've got the Witch of Coins, Queen of Coins energy. So, you know, this could have been you. You were very independent, you know, even though you missed this person, you were very independent. Um, and maybe, again, you were using your spirituality. She's looking into a crystal ball. Maybe you were somebody very empathetic, very intuitive at that time as well. And we've got the Ten of Wands, so it's very much a burden in, in to you. This was very much a burden, this situation. So what else about this karmic relationship? We've got the Page of Coins. I feel you had communication. I feel there's, you know, it definitely feels like somebody went away to war or something. And I feel there was communication between you. And, you know, you were independent, you, you managed without this person, you were in your own power. Um, but you missed that collaboration, you, you wanted this person, um, you wanted to be with this person. But you managed, you were independent, you focused on your own spirituality. What's this karmic relationship about? It was very much a love match here with that two of cups. Yeah, you love this person, but, you know, the hangman energy, you know, this situation got stuck, basically. What was the outcome of this karmic connection? What was the outcome? 
What's the outcome? We've got the Knight of Wands. So I feel this person did come back towards you, okay? This person did come back towards you with a lot of passion, okay? It was a very passionate connection. So they did return. And you, when they returned, you were in this Empress energy. You'd really done that work on yourself. And you hadn't let it get you down. And they came back to a different person. So that could have caused difficulties in the connection because you were different to when they left. Okay, we'll leave that one there. So what about the father energy? What about the father energy? Where's the father energy there? We've got the warlock of wands. So this is the king of wands. So the king of wands is that fiery energy, that passionate energy. This could have been somebody who was... Um, very much a ruler in the household, you know, in charge of the household um, because obviously we've been going through patriarchal times. So this was very much his word, you know, his word was it, final word, basically. And you could have rebelled against that energy. Yeah, six attackers. <laughs> I feel that you, you moved away from this person, okay? You moved away um, too much controlling energy around that person. And we've got the lover's energy. So I feel that you you moved away to find your soulmate, to find love. And we've got the tower energy there. So, you know, this could have caused difficulties between you and your father figure in your lifetime, okay? But you went towards your ten of cups, okay? You went towards your love. You followed your heart, okay? You followed your heart in that lifetime. So that's beautiful energy. So what about this outlaw energy? So what about this outlaw energy? What's that talking about there? We've got three of daggers. So there was heartbreak here in this situation. Very difficult times for you here. Okay, to be outside of the law, outside of society. Um, we've got the queen of swords energy. So... You know, you stood your ground, you had your boundaries up, and you spoke your truth, but it, it wasn't easy to do that. Um, okay, and we've got the Ace of Coins. So I feel that there was a chance for you to move, have a fresh start in some way in the situation. So what is that talking about? Yeah, we've got Eight of Wands, so... I feel that people around you did help you. You had allies who would bring you messages or bring you parcels of food or would help you in some way with that Eight of Wands energy there. And Six of Coins, you, you came into balance in yourself. You came um, into a balanced way of, of being in that, in that lifetime um, and finding a way to be in that society. I feel moving forward. So what was the outcome? Yeah, we've got the magician energy. So yeah, I feel that you you found within you, because the theme is here, using your power, being in your independence. So I feel you found your power to manifest what you wanted, to manifest these things. As I said, there were people around you that were willing to help you. And maybe you didn't use magic, use magic as well in these times. Maybe you were magical and you used magic to help you to get through those times. Okay, so we're going to move on. So we've got Syrian and a Pleiadian star seed. So the Syrians originate from planets uh, Sirius A or Sirius B. Sirius A has more than one sun and Sirius B is a water planet. Home to the Mer people and the Miengu. Here to bring Earth to harmony and express divine love so yeah let's have a look at that let me tell us about that lifetime we've got seven of coins so i feel that you did you know try your best to spread the love to spread the word you know spread that message of unconditional love um around the cosmos as it were and you did work hard with that 
and we got the ten of coins so you you were able to create abundance in your life you and you showed other people how to create abundance and you were very powerful you'd been through a lot and had a lot of lessons so you had a not a lot of knowledge um you had a lot of knowledge within you to pass on to others so what was the outcome of this situation yeah we got the full energy so i feel that you know when your work was done you chose to ascend i feel you ascended um that could have been your planet of origin i don't know you you know if you get your natal chart done you can check these things and then we've got the Pleiadian star seed from the Pleiades, known as the Seven Sisters, Earth's record keepers, exist within the fifth dimension, a matriarchal society here to expand collective consciousness. So the Pleiadians are very much with us now. They're around us now. Um, many Pleiadian star seeds on the planet now. Um, but you had a lifetime, obviously, gaining knowledge, gaining wisdom within the Pleiades. And you're here to... to have you know have that fresh start have that new beginning to show people the way um to have those beginnings with passion follow their passion and we've got the, the knight of daggers so you come forward with the truth you share the truth you want to come forward with the truth to share with people this knowledge yeah because you know, the life on this planet has been very difficult. There's been a lot of sadness, a lot of disappointment. And we've got the devil as well. Yeah, there's been a lot of devil energy, you know, lower energies. And you're coming forward with the truth. You want everyone to see the truth of what, what is going on here. What's the outcome? We've got the temperance, yeah. So things are going to come into balance you know, you are one of the people here, one of the Pleiades here, to help bring the planet into balance, to to that new world, you know, to create a new beginning. Anything else? Yeah, there's been a lot of lies, a lot of deceit going on in the world, and this is all going to come to light. I feel you're, you know, you're one of the people that's going to help bring this to light. You know, maybe you've been looking into this, you've been helping to wake other people up. Yeah, and we've got the, um, the Knight of Cups energy. So this is a very loving energy. You're in that loving energy, compassionate energy. You're here to help. You're here to help. Okay, so let's get some other messages. So there's a lot there. So we've got blinded to pain. So I feel in some lifetimes you went through enormous pain, okay, in some way. You've been through emotional pain or physical pain and you numbed yourself in some way. Okay, there was a numbing energy um, and it's number 13 there. It is actually the number of the goddess the divine feminine okay um but yeah blended to blinded to pain so you num had to numb yourself okay you had to close off your emotions so i feel that you're working on opening up again to start feeling again to be in those energies to be open you know open-hearted to feel the feelings and that's something you need to come back into because you had lifetimes of pain and you numbed yourself you you became unemotional and you need to tap into those feelings and those emotions again. And we've got forgetting oneself. So again, it's a similar energy, I feel. Um, I feel you had to blend in, as, as we've seen in some lifetimes. You had to forget who you were. You had to blend in. You had to fight, you know, your feelings in a way. You know, you wanted to express yourself. And in some lifetimes, you did express yourself. But maybe in some lifetimes, you had to forget who you were, you couldn't be your authentic self. And that is true of a lot of people that live life as witches, for example, um, you know, to blend in, to not stand out because of all the witch trials and things like that. So it's time to be yourself, to be your authentic self, to not be afraid, 
you know, to shine your light, to be yourself again. And we've got the number one plus seven, which is eight, which is abundance. It's time to come into your abundance. It's time to move away from the past and step into your power as your authentic self. So we've got denial. I acknowledge my fear and I replace it with the insight of awareness. So, you know, again, self-denial, you know, lacking feeling, not wanting to admit how you're feeling in certain situations, um, you know, not admitting you were afraid or fearful, you know, numbing yourself, as I said, um, forgetting who you truly are, but you've come into that energy, you're coming into that energy of insight and awareness of who you truly are again. And we've got the guilt energy here. I release my beliefs that no longer assist in my soul's growth. So yeah, you've you've had a lot of guilt in your life. You've felt a lot of guilt for some reason. You've been holding on to guilt. So it's time to let that go. Cut those cords. Okay, cut those cords to let go of that guilt. There's, n there's nothing to feel guilty about. Okay, let it go and just move on and be in, in that energy of moving forward. Because you're growing. You've You've done a lot of growth here. I want to expand my consciousness and my awareness. So you've done that soul's growth. You've worked really hard to get into a really good place within your soul's growth. And you have learned a lot in these in these lifetimes. So what love messages? We've got alone time needed. So we saw that in some of your lifetimes, you spent a lot of time alone. And it's time to manifest love. It's time for you to open up to love, to have that loving connection. And it says union of heart, souls, bodies and mind. This is what you're wanting. You're wanting this true union with somebody. You know, heart connection, soul connection, body connection, mind connection, that true intimacy. And I feel you will, work, you will manifest that for yourself. So what are your chakra lessons? So we've got the, the base, physical health. We have two the base energies come out, grounding. So the base chakra is, you know, feeling safe, secure, grounded. So it's time to look after your physical health, um, look after your vitality, your strength, your body image, your balance, you know, get centered, look after yourself, so be in that energy of self-love, take care of yourself and ground your energy, get into nature, be present in the moment, be practical, have that stability, okay, ground yourself into Mother Earth and from that energy you can move forward. So let's look at your soul healing messages. So we've got awareness, go within, be self-aware, who are you at the core, know yourself. So exactly what we were saying, be your authentic self in this lifetime. And yes, live in the now, the past is gone, you cannot change it, the future is yet to be written, all we ever have is now, so make the most of now. So be in that moment, live in that moment, okay, find the joy, be your authentic self, let go of any negative feelings. And nurture yourself, do something nice for yourself, really do that, take care, you know, as we said, look after your body, you know, your physical health, and be your authentic self, so it's just confirming all the messages there, okay, so they're beautiful messages for you there, part one, I hope that helped in some way, love and blessings. Hello, part two, you chose the Egyptian king here, I don't know who that is, so we're going to look at your messages your soul your past life soul lesson so pre-shuffle the oracles and we're going to clarify these with the tarot so we've got male female atlantis communal living and this is my deck remember the time atlantis life in atlantis so we've got atlantis twice here Atlantis and phobia. So we're going to link all those together because they've all come out. So it seems very strong to me that you definitely had some sort of lifetime in Atlantis. I feel that could be linked with that as well, actually. And you were possibly a priestess or a priest. And there could be a phobia around that. And um, it could be to do with drowning because obviously the legend goes, obviously they were, you know, covered with water um that that land that community we've got male female so i feel maybe there was gender issues with you other lifetimes or you have experienced life as both male and female we're looking to that and communal living here 
So pile two. What's this male female about? Got seven of coins. Nine of cups. Four of coins. So maybe what I'm picking up is maybe you're in a life, um, a time zone where same sex relationships were frowned on. Um, it's only in the past few years, really, that people are being a bit more open, but some people are still not really, are they? Um, so that is one of them I'm picking up. OK, so the seven of coins, I, want, I feel you wanted to build something with somebody and there was a wish fulfillment here. But we've got four of coins and I feel it could never be. Um, OK, because of society, I feel that was talking about society. Um, OK, so I feel you wanted to pursue it, but this other person, OK, wasn't open to that. So that's one thing. I'm, that's one thing I'm picking up. So what else about this male, female? We've got temperance. So straight away, I'm feeling that you were very balanced within your masculine and feminine in some of your lifetimes, okay? Um, you were equally in the masculine and equally in the feminine energies. So you were very well balanced. So what else about that? This is my deck, Artistic Tarot, by the way. Wow, we've got the Ten of Cups. So in one lifetime, you did find happiness in a relationship with that Ten of Cups when you were being in balance. I think you found somebody that matched you, okay, that they were balanced in their energies as well. And we've got Queen of Cups, so it's a very loving energy, and Queen of Swords. So it could have been two women. It could have been two women in this connection, okay, that you found this love with, but you both had elements of masculine and feminine, um, you know, within you, I feel. Yeah, okay, I'm going to move on from that. So let's let's look at Atlantis. Let's look at Atlantis. Can you tell us about Atlantis? You could have had many lives in Atlantis because Atlantis was around for a long time. We don't really know everything about it. It's very mysterious, just bits and pieces. So can you what can you tell me about this life in Atlantis? So we'll just focus on one thing if we can. Where well, you were the priestess. Wow, we've got the four of wands. So I feel you were very stable. Okay, you're a very stable person in that lifetime. Wow, and we've got the lover's energy. So I feel you were there with a soulmate, okay? You were there with a soulmate, and there were men and women in that society. And you had this connection. You were very, you could have been twin flames even, but there was definitely this balance and this commitment as well, that four of wands. You had this committed connection. And it was very honest with that Ace of Swords. You were very honest and truthful. And you were very fair with each other. You know, you were very fair. You had the justice. And we got King of Wands energy. So you could have been connecting with a masculine uh, air sign, uh, Aries Leo, sorry, Aries Leo, Sagittarius. My brain went dead then. So somebody very passionate, very driven, and he was very, you know, in a good position of authority, I feel. What else can you tell us about Atlantis? Obviously, these are general readings, so just take what resonates. If you want a personal one about this sort of thing, you can email me at somemagic99 at gmail.com. So we've got page of coins. 
So I feel there was good communication between you. What else can you tell us about this priest or priestess? Wow. So it was a very happy time that you were there with that, that sun card. You had this happy relationship. There was a happy thing going on in in you know around Atlantis at the time. It was it could have been the golden age, um, just before the fall. You were there at that time, you know, the height of the technology, the spirituality. But we got the six of swords, so that is uh, moving away, isn't it? So you could have been there at the fall of Atlantis, the golden age, when things started to get dark, okay? And that could be where the phobia came from there, because I did pick up that it was talking about, you know, when the waters came and everything, you know, most people went, in, you know, in the floods. Some people did get away, but obviously not everybody got away. So you could have, you know, drowned in that time. So what is this phobia talking about? Yeah, heartache here. The star. So with that star, I feel that you did, you know, you did pass over at that time. Okay, you did pass over and, you know, went back to the stars as it were, went back to source. And you found lots of love there. There was lots of loving energy there. Um, why is there this phobia there, though? Why is there this phobia there? Well, we've got the emperor energy. So that's that masculine energy. So maybe you got stuck in that masculine energy. Um you know, afraid to feel your feelings, afraid to feel this grief, this loss. Sorry about that, the door again. <laughs> and we got the moon. So, yeah, I feel you needed to balance out, to help with this phobia, to balance out your masculine and feminine, because we've got the emperor, the masculine energy, and we've got the moon here, that feminine energy. So I think you need to balance that out, and it will really help you. Because we saw in one of your lifetimes, you were very balanced with that temperance. So what's this communal living about? And again, that could be talking about um, Atlantis as well. Um, because obviously they did live in these communal places. So let's have a look. What's this communal living about? Wow, we've got the King of Cups and the World. So you could have lived in various different places in the world with this communal living. You could have moved around. You could have been somebody, maybe you moved around with like those tribes. Um, I can't think of the name of it that moved around, you know, in, in desert areas, um, in the Middle East areas um, where you had tents and you pitched up tents and you just settled wherever. And we got the King of Cups, that's that loving energy. Um, a very loving energy, somebody full of love and compassion. So that, I feel that was you. And we got the Six of Wands. So it was a very successful time in that lifetime. It was um, abundant. Um, you always managed to find food and water. Yeah, like a nomadic life I'm picking up that you had. Yeah, we got Ten of Coins. So it was a very abundant life. Um, on the outside of the people, it may have looked, you know, that it wasn't, but there was lots of love, there was success, you know, people got on in that community, there was always plenty because you shared everything, you shared everything in that com communal area. So let's move on from there. So healing energy, so we've got Parasite. So this reminds me of the, like an energy vampire. Okay, so there could have been lifetimes when you were you were like an energy vampire, okay? You were um, sucking energy from others um, or you were in a very dark energy. Yeah, this person looks for it in a very dark energy here. Um, you were in very, you, you may have been doing it subconsciously. You may not even have known you were doing it, but because you were so dark, 
anybody that was in the light, you were sucking energy from them, I feel. Okay. And we've got perchance to dream. So maybe you've had trouble dreaming. Maybe you've, you know, forgotten how to dream, like have a vision, have a wish. Um, maybe you're having sleep problems and you're not able to dream. You're not getting into that REM sleep at the moment. Um, so find ways to relax yourself. Okay. And it is about getting into that balance, being in that loving energy of yourself, nurturing yourself at this time. So we've got grief. I understand that losing something is an opportunity to appreciate it. So I feel around the Atlantis lifetime was a lot of grief associated with that, definitely. Losing like fam your whole family, your whole community, um, the life that you'd le led maybe for many years, a way of life. And also the lifetime when you lost a love, you know, that we picked up on at the beginning, you lost a love. And yeah, you suffered a lot of grief here. And we've got blame. I accept responsibility for my well-being. So maybe there was something in you, you were blaming others for the way you felt in the past or even in this life. And it, we have to take responsibility for our own well-being um, we choose our thoughts, we choose our actions, okay? And I feel that you're coming out of that energy of blaming, whether that be in this life or in a past life. And when you do this, you'll come into abundance. I'm a limitless being and I can manifest whatever I desire in this physical reality. So you experienced a life like that before, you know, in that communal living. And in, in Atlantis as well, in the golden age, it would have been a very abundant time. And you've forgotten how to do this. So you need to tap back into those energies of being able to manifest um, whatever you desire. And it's all about feeling it into being, you know, feel it in your heart space, act as if you already have it to attract that energy of abundance to you. So what love lessons? So we've got nostalgia, past life memories. So you may have memories, you may have, you know, distant memories in your mind of times that you've shared you may have an awareness um, maybe you, you want to do a past life regression or you've done that and um, there are uh, ones online that you can do that are really helpful and yes healing healing has been needed you've you've had to heal you know obviously the atlantean timeline <clears throat> would have been a very traumatic thing to have to heal from and there could still be residue healing as i say there could be phobias left over from that but being in positive thoughts about your love life and about your life in general you know we're going back to this abundance will help you attract that and manifest that in and yes you you're going through that transformation i feel you've been going through some sort of transformation in this lifetime and you will come out you know like the butterfly out of the cocoon as a new you know a new version of you so chakra energies, we've got the third eye, openness, flexibility, imagination and learning. So time to open up your third eye, work on that, connect into the divine, connect into your intuition, your higher self, using your imagination, visualising what it is you desire for yourself, connecting with these ancient memories, connecting with your guides and angels. And we have the heart chakra connection, look at that, I was just talking about connection. And again, number two plus six, which is eight, which is abundance again. Universal oneness, love, interconnection and support. So be in that energy of open heartedness, be in that energy of compassion and you will attract this in. You, We are all connected. We are all one. And love is the energy. And open your heart to give and receive love again. So your soul healing messages options explore your options your choices in life to grow and evolve yeah don't stay stuck service be of service serve your purpose and help in the community and i feel very much you were doing that in atlantis and in that communal living as well i feel you have been doing that and soul light let your light shine into the world be the light for others still in the dark yeah shine your light i feel you were in the dark we've had that 
you know, we had that dark energy around you there. And you know what it's like to be in the dark. And you've come into the light and you're going to help others. And what lights you up here? So this is my Healing Heart Oracle. What lights you up? So you're going to find things that light you up and do those. And there's a creative project, start a creative project. So something that's going to really stir your passions and light you up. So there are your messages, part two. I'm going to leave that there. Many blessings. Hello, part three. You chose the green adventuring crystal tree. So we're going to have a look at your past lives and then we'll clarify with the tarot. So we've got leaving or travel. Asia. Trees. And this is my past life oracle. Early American settlers. Priest, religion, church and Atlantis, crystal healing. So I feel that a couple of these go together here. Um, so leaving or travel, we've got the early American settlers because obviously a lot of people left the UK to go to America. So I'm going to lump those two together. And Asia um, with religion or priest. So I'm going to lump that together. I feel that's picking up on some sort of um, priesthood. And then trees and crystal healing. I'm going to lump those together as well there. So let's have a look. Let's have a look. What do we need to know about this early American settler's life? Early American settlers. So you would have travelled, obviously, over the seas to get to America, to the New World, as it were. So we've got four of coins. So I feel things were not going well for you. Um, if you were in the UK or another country, maybe that need you know somewhere. Um, I think a lot of people in the UK went. Um, so things were not going well financially. So you wanted to take that leap, and we got the six of swords. Yeah, that is definitely a ship sailing away, isn't it? So you're moving away from the past to the new world, leaving the past behind you to have this fresh start. And we got seven of wands. So you were a bit concerned. You were not sure. Um, bit defensive you were not sure how it was going to go yeah and it was hard you know the ten of wands that journey across the ocean was hard um, a lot of burdens a lot of you know difficult times that you had to go through okay so what else about this traveling to the new world We got the magician so i feel that you manifested this you you know maybe subconsciously you really did enable yourself to make that change and move forward and away to this new world to this new start in life and we've got queen of coins so that's earth sign energy so you were very stable uh, very secure in yourself and you came into abundance with that queen of coins you came into abundance we've got high priestess so i feel that you very much tapped in to your intuition at that time which guided you okay to do this so what was the outcome what was the outcome yeah we've got three of coins i feel you were working with others you know i feel you you got together with others to collaborate what else Yeah, there was a lot of defeat. There was a lot of difficulty to get going, to get started. But we got the death card. You did go through a transformation. You did go from one way of being to another way of being. And, you know, overcome your obstacles. Anything else about the outcome here? Yeah, we've got Queen of Wands. So I feel you're very passionate about this about this new beginning and you know you trusted in divine timing you trusted in you know that things would work out and you did love this new world you did love this when you got there you felt you know better for that okay so i'm going to leave that there so the next one is talking about asia and you know religion a, a priesthood so i feel they're linked actually so what can you tell us about this life in Asia? What can you tell us about this life in Asia? 
we've got the chariot so things moved forward in that lifetime but we've got the moon so some things were hidden um, very much a feminine energy with that moon energy there were some things underhand things and we've got two of coins so there could have been decisions that you needed to make but we've got the page of cups so you were loving this you were loving this life as this monk here or this priest what else can you tell us about this life so you were in that loving energy and you could have been very young with that page you could have been very young a lot of them start young don't they as boys you know you could have started that life very young okay from a young age because you were given a good life you know home food and we've got nine of cups yeah you you really liked that lifetime you really enjoyed what you were doing you really did what's the final outcome of that life what's the final outcome wow yeah you really loved it yeah it gave you that fulfillment and that self-love that's beautiful okay let's get the final one so we've got trees and atlantis here so what's this tree he's talking about? So you could have had a life as a tree, and I know that sounds laughable, but if you listen to Dolores Cannon's books, we have experienced life in all different elements, even drops of water. Okay, we experience all there is. So you could have had a life as a tree, or definitely maybe been an elemental or something. So we've got Page of Swords. So... You know, that does feel to me that maybe you were the tree uh, because the Page of Swords keeps an eye on other people. You were watching people around you or the animals around you. You were observing. You were an observer as a tree. And, yeah, you were abundant as that tree with the oak coins. You could have been a fruit tree. Um, you know, you could have had abundance of fruit on your tree. And you, you just basically watched other people. You observed, and all the trees are connected under the earth. You know, all the the roots are connected. It's like our internet system, but it's the energetic system, you know, connected. All nature is connected. So what's the final message there? Six of coins. Yeah, you were very balanced in that lifetime, okay? You were very balanced. So what's this crystal being about? So we've got crystal being healing. So again, you know, this is elemental, you know, a tree and then a crystal being. So you could have been a, a crystalline human or a crystal, an actual crystal. So what is this talking about? So we've got Queen of Swords energy. So yeah, you protected yourself in that energy. You protected your own energy with that Queen of Swords. And you help people see the truth, I feel. We've got the Knight of Swords there. So people could communicate with you. Maybe you um, communicated with people telepathically. They got messages from you. Um, there was this, you know, this connection. Because this is the mind, you know, this is the mind and thoughts. Yeah, Ten of Swords. There was a lot of communication that people could get from you. Um, through telepathy, okay, through telepathy. What's the final message on that? We've got judgment. So, yeah, I feel that you had a lot of knowledge to give people to help them in their journeys there. I'm going to leave that there. So let's have a look at what else we've got. So we've got anger and chains. So you could have had a lifetime where you were in chains. Maybe you were in chains in a prison um, somewhere you know, or chains like, um, you know, just stuck somewhere where you, like, not real chains, but you felt chained, and this made you feel angry, you didn't have your freedom, there was a lack of freedom, I feel that's what I'm getting here, there was a lack of freedom, you didn't have the freedom to move around, you felt chained and restricted in some way, so there could be some pent-up anger within you that needs to be released here, okay, so look into that. And we've got, I won't cry for you, number two, two. So, you know, this feels like a relationship or partnership where somebody hurt you. And again, you're not feeling your emotions. You're not um, letting those feelings go. You're holding on to it. 
I won't cry for you is somebody holding on, you know, out, out of anger or out of spite or out of some um, not wanting to show how much this person hurt you. But it's not doing you any favours by holding on to that. You need to really feel it and let it go. Forgive this person. Forgive yourself, okay? And let it go. Let it go. Yeah, we've got regret. I know I cannot change the past. So there may be regret. You know, we all have regret over things we did and said and done. But we cannot change it. All you can do is forgive yourself and move on, as I said. Just move on. Okay, cut cords to any situation or person where you have regret and just move on from it. Fear. I realise I'm testing my resolve to live in the energy of love. So yeah, be in the energy of love. You deserve love. Love is the opposite of fear. Okay, love will always be more powerful than fear. So let go of fear and be in the energy of love. And freedom. I possess the power and the free will to create my own happiness. So we had the chains energy. So I feel freedom is very important to you, okay? Um, you could have had lifetimes where you were a prisoner, you were chained up in some way and you've, you didn't have your freedom. And you feel very strongly about that now, not just for yourself, but for other people. So let's look at your love messages. So past life love. So you may have memories about maybe you've met somebody in this life that you felt you knew in another life. And we've got the High Priestess vibe. So you're somebody that's very in tune with that intuition and unconditional love for self and others. So you're coming into that energy of self-love. We saw that in that life as a Buddhist monk or whatever, that you had that there. And you're looking for that supportive relationship because you are that sort of person. You're very supportive. So your chakra message is seeing. So this is third eye energy. Looking at things with your third eye, your intuition, seeing the truth of a matter, seeing the clarity, you know, your inner BS detector. And we've got throat chakra sound healing here. Three, three, a power number. So we've got music, silence, rhythm and vibration. So sound could be very healing for you. Maybe you're someone that can sing and you've not found your voice or play an instrument or of some sort or do light language. There's something about using your voice, okay, here to create sound and it'd be very healing for you and others. So soul healing message is supportive. Be the support to others in your life when they need it. So we said that. I said you're a very supportive person. And discernment. Choose who you can trust, who you want to spend time with and make wise choices for yourself. And I said that before as well. Use that discernment, okay? And final message is the heart healing oracle. Allow yourself time to grieve your loss. So any loss, give yourself permission to feel those feelings. Find a mentor or mentor someone yourself. Really help another person. And being that unconditional love for self and others. And I feel that this is a big lesson that you've been learning in your lifetimes. So beautiful messages there. So don't forget to like, share, subscribe and comment. And I will see you next time. Lots of love. Bye for now.